I haven't been really in the mood to film and post content lately for personal reasons, but I'm back. But I'm back. But I'm back. <laughs> Anyways. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I will be telling you guys all of the books I plan to read for the Gothtober Readathon. So the Gothtober Readathon is a month-long readathon in the month of October and it was started by Ledette M, Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe, and Tish from Little Wolf. I, like many other people, really really love the spooky vibes of the fall and I love to dedicate the month of October to as many spooky fall books as I can, so thus I have decided to participate in this month long readathon. So this video is going to pair as my October TBR and of course my TBR for my readathons. However, if you are new to my reading experience and my usual journey with TBR videos, you know that this video could very well mean absolutely nothing in approximately 30 minutes. So take this with a grain of salt. Don't hold me accountable too much to be reading all of these books, let alone any of these books because my experiences with readathons, I set a TBR and then I find a book that I would rather read two minutes after I chose that book. However, although I am self-aware of my habits, I will continue to repeat them. Let's get into all of the books that I plan on reading. So there are 13 prompts and of course, like a maniac, I am going to try to fill every single prompt and choose a book for every single prompt. That being said, the very first prompt I do not have a book for at this current moment in time. So I would love if I could get some recommendations in the comments below. And the first prompt is disability rep. So reading a book with disability rep in it. And I know there are plenty of books with disability reps in them, but I really want to find a spooky slash fall read for all of the books that I read in this month and that has been a bit difficult. I definitely need to do much more research in this before the month is over so I can choose a book, but I would really love if I could get any and all recommendations down below. The next prompt is to read a book by a BIPOC author and I do have two options for this book that also fall into other prompts in this readathon. The first one is Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. This is a recent new adult high fantasy. I really don't know much more than that. I believe it has something to do with necromancers if I'm led to believe by the title. I believe it's inspired by some sort of African lore. I think it might be set in an African inspired country. Again, I really don't know too much about the book itself, but I have been hearing raving reviews about this. And because this book also fits for the bones prompt aka to read a book with bones on the title slash on the cover this was a perfect option for this prompt. The second option I have for this prompt is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. All I really know about this one is that it is pegged as Dark Academia, which is again another prompt in this readathon is to read a book under the Dark Academia umbrella. And as you guys may know, I am really not a fan of Dark Academia. I really haven't read a book pegged as Dark Academia that I have enjoyed. However, I have said that if I were to read Dark academia, I would want it to be by a marginalized author. So I really am interested to picking this up to see if I actually enjoy this one. The next prompt is to read a book with LGBTQIA plus characters in it. And for this, again, I have two options. The first one is Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. I have included this book, I think, 
two or three times in other readathon TBRs, and I really just need to get to this. It is a fantasy novella, and I believe it involves a romance between a man and a male forest spirit god. Not entirely sure. Again, it is a novella, so I feel like my ignorance towards the plot is warranted a bit, but I really want to read this because I have heard that it's super atmospheric, it's perfect for fall, and during a readathon, I mean, nothing is better than a novella. Except perhaps my next option, which is a romance book, and this one is When Dusk Comes by J.J. Arias. This is a female-female romance between a girl and a vampire queen. I am not sure how I found this story. I'm sure it must have been recommended to me by somebody, and I immediately added it to my TBR for obvious reasons. I mean, it's female-female, it has vampires, what more could you want? And like I said, I really do like to include romances in readathon TBRs because romances are really quick for me to devour, and especially because I gear more towards fantasy and like heavy fantasy books, it's nice to break it up with a couple romances here and there. So that is why this is here. I'm really excited about this one, guys. I really hope it's as sexy as this cover is. I really hope it's as sexy as this Goodreads description is promising. I am living my best life. The next prompt is to read a book with female protagonists. Now, I'm sure almost every single book that I have included in this TBR can fit the bill for that prompt, but I have also chosen two more books to add on top of my TBR. And the first one is Archive of the Forgotten by A.J. Hackwith. This is the sequel to my favorite book of 2020, The Library of the Unwritten, and I still have not read it. I got an arc of it earlier this summer, and I'm really, 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 really excited to read it. And this, of course, does follow our main character, Claire, and she is the librarian of this library in hell where all unwritten books go and are kept, and she has to take care of them, and then she gets wound up in this plot to find the Devil's Bible. That's the synopsis of Library of the Unwritten. Of course, this is the sequel. Very, very, very excited to read this, as I've said. Why am I not reading it right now? I truly could not give an answer to you. The next one I have, I'm sure would be able to fit in multiple other prompts, but because I don't know too much about the story and I haven't really read it yet, I am just putting it in the default female protagonist prompt until I can hopefully fit it into other prompts in my wrap up. And that is Down Comes the Night by Allison Shaft. This is a 2021 release and I was very lucky and grateful to actually win this manuscript copy in a Goodreads giveaway. I'm just going to read the back for you guys and it says, Down Comes the Night is a YA fantasy novel I've been waiting ages for part mystery, part gothic romance, and part horror. This is a must-read for fans of Guillermo del Toro's gothic films, the standalone fantasies of Margaret Rogerson, or the dark romance of Emily A. Duncan. I love Pan's Labyrinth, I love An Enchantment of Ravens, and I love Wicked Saints. This book sounds right up my alley. I'm so excited for this book. I will be doing a dedicated reading vlog for this because it is pretty fancy that I got like a bound manuscript. I think it's kind of cool. I was really excited about it. And I am just overall excited for this new 2021 release. So you guys will be getting this in the month of October. Stay tuned, hit the notification bell, subscribe, all that stuff. Shameless plug in the middle of the video. We love to see it. The next prompt is to read a modern retelling of a gothic classic. Now, I have taken a bit of liberties with this prompt, and by doing so, I have given myself three options for this singular prompt. 
what can I say? I am but a raging bisexual. I like my options. The first one, I don't even know if it includes a retelling of a gothic classic, but I'm gonna include it anyways because it also fulfills another prompt that I mentioned earlier, and that is A Cathedral of Myth and Bone by Cat Howard. This has bone in the title. It fulfills the bone prompt. And I actually have started this for a previous readathon. I started this for the backlist readathon and I did not finish it. I got 40 pages in so I think I read like two stories. This is an anthology of like feminist retellings, reimaginings of like different characters of like folklore, fairy tales, uh, myths. It probably will not include any retellings of gothic classics, but it is still a retelling and I have started it and it is an anthology so it would be fairly easy to finish for a readathon even though I've already tried and I didn't. And it, you know, fulfills two props. So, kind of. Maybe. The next one is definitely has to do with a gothic classic, but it is a prequel to a gothic classic, not a retelling. So again, taking liberties, but that is Dracul by Draker Stoker. How do you say that name? Daker. Daker. So yes, my second option is Dracul by Daker Stoker. This is apparently a prequel to Bram Stoker's Dracula and Daker used Bram Stoker's like additional text and like unpublished works and things like that to compile this story. I'm sure classic lovers, especially of gothic literature, are like cringing at my description of this. I pardon my ignorance, I truly do not know anything about the literature sphere and this book, obviously, and even if it's legitimate, if there's any controversies with it, I, I don't know anything, but I will be reading it because, spoiler alert, I will be reading Dracula by Bram Stoker. So, obviously, I wanted to read the original, read the retelling, slash prequel, pair them together for my own opinions. Let's see how it goes. The next option is Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. Now, obviously this isn't a retelling of Dracula, but it includes vampires and Bram Stoker created vampires with Dracula. So like, I feel like it fits. I feel like any vampire book would fit for this prompt in a retelling of Dracula. And if you don't think so, well, you can create your own TBR for this readathon. I welcome you to do so. The next prompt is to read a book set in a foreign country. Again, probably many of these books can fit this prompt, but I will be choosing Dracula by Bram Stoker for this because I know it's set in a foreign country and it works, so I'm putting it here. The next prompt is the lies prompt. So read a book that has lies on the title or has a main character who is a liar. I actually had quite a hard time with this prompt because I didn't really have any books on my TBR that had the word lie in it and I feel like it's kind of hard to decipher if a main character is a liar without actually reading the book and finding out. I have chosen Rebecca by Daphne de Marier. Again, the classic lovers are cringing as they're watching. They're probably not watching this video. They probably don't watch my channel. Anyways, this I believe does fit only, and I mean only because I watched the Rebecca trailer that Netflix is doing starring Lily James, aka the only reason I even want to read this book so I can watch the movie, and I got liar vibes from the husband, because of course I did. So I'm just gonna assume that people are lying in this book, because I know it's also like a thriller, mystery, things are weird, mysterious things are happening, truths are being withheld, so I, I I feel like I'm pretty confident that this works for this prompt. If it somehow doesn't and I'm just making things up, let me know down below, but I definitely will be reading this book regardless because, again, I 
love Lily James. The next prompt, ugh, I'm really excited about this one. This is to read a book with red on the cover. Again, so many of these books can fit for that prompt. But the book I have specifically chosen for this prompt is The Call by Peter O. Gielin? This book is actually kind of the sole reason I am doing this readathon because as soon as I heard about it, I knew I wanted to read it in October. And reading one book in October simply just does not work with me. I have to then find a readathon and then read 13 books instead of just reading that singular one that was really what I wanted to read. This book is a horror with the Fae. I am so excited for this. I really, really, really want, and please, if you have any, any, any and all recommendations, I really want to read horror with fantasy creatures. I just want books that take these magical creatures that have been historically used to scare children from like not going into the woods and not going into the ocean and things like that. I want books that use those magical creatures and not make them love interests or main characters or anything like that. Although of course I love that too. No, I want them to be in a horror setting. I want them to make me terrified. Okay. That's what I want. And this book is that. I'm I'm so excited for this book. I really, really hope I like it because the Fae are quite honestly probably the most terrifying magical creatures. If this book promises me some horror excellence with these creepy ass little beings instead of, you know, broody teenage boys with tails, I'm game. Next prompt is to read a book centered around gray morality, so a main character that is morally gray. So I have two options for this prompt. I have chosen Strange Practice by Vivian Shaw. Strange Practice is about Greta Helsing and she has unique medical practices in that she practices on like supernatural beings and it takes place in medieval London when a cult has like taken over and she has to try to defeat the cult, I assume. I really don't know if Greta is a morally gray character at all, but I have been wanting to read this book because the premise sounds incredible and if it doesn't end up being like morally gray, I'll fit it in a different prompt somehow some way if I do end up reading it. The second option for the Morally Gray prompt is Menace by J.M. Darhauer. This is a recommendation from Mina from Mina Reads. This is following a girl who almost gets murdered by a guy in the mafia, but they fall in love. Everyone I know who has read this has given it like four or five stars and it sounds fun. The next prompt is to read a book featuring an undead character. Of course, Dracula would absolutely fit for this prompt, but instead of Dracula, I am going to be reading Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu. Again, probably not pronouncing that right. I have wanted to read Carmilla since I was a preteen and saw that YouTube original like mini series, not YouTube original, but it was a group of people who like adapted this book in like a modern setting, I believe it was. I watched like maybe one of the episodes and I was like, wow, lesbian vampires. Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I know that people have mentioned that like this isn't a great book for like lesbian rep. I mean, obviously it was written by a white dude in like the 1800s, so I'm not really going to this book for lesbian representation. I just would like to still see lesbian vampires in like a classic novel setting. I'll take what I can get and I'll get the actual own voices in modern day authors and books and things like that. I just, I'm, I, I, I wanna read it. Like I wanna read it. 
I want to read it. It's, I know it's problematic. I already know, but I want to read it. The next prompt is to read a book that is oldest purchased in your TBR. Now, I really could not tell you what the first book I bought was. What I can tell you is a spooky slash fall read that I have bought quite a few months ago and still have not read. And that is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. This has again been on a readathon TBR before. I believe I put it in my October TBR last year or at least planned to read it in October and of course I did not get to it. This is about a boy who I think hangs out in the graveyard maybe and like he encounters a ghost again maybe question mark I am not sure I've heard the audiobook is fantastic and I believe that Lexi from Alexandra Roseland really likes this book she really loves Gaiman so either she hasn't read this or she has read it and really likes it so I know that this is like a middle grade it has like cute little pictures in it and it would probably be quite a short read and good during a readathon and the last prompt that I have is the dark academia prompt which I have mentioned Catherine house that is an option but the second option I have for this is a deadly education by Naomi Novik I got an arc of this a couple months ago as well and I know Know that it has something to do with a school that you either graduate from or you die from. So that sounds like a good time. I've heard great things about Naomi Novik's writing, that it's very atmospheric, it's very lush. I have both Uprooted and Spitting Silver on my shelves already, and I have not even read a single book from her yet, but this will hopefully be the first one because I'm putting it in this TBR and not uprooted or spinning silver. So we'll see how I like this. That is it for my Gothtober Readathon TBR. I really am not sure how I'm going to carry out this readathon on my channel yet. As you, you know, may or may not have noticed, I haven't been very consistent in the past two three months uh, with videos. So I am a little hesitant on how I'm going to, you know, incorporate the actual readathon into my channel aside from just me reading all of these books alone without talking to anybody about them. But I have considered, and I'm sure many of you will be happy if I do end up doing this, have been considering bringing weekly vlogs back. I really don't know if vlogs are popular anymore. I feel like a lot of people don't really care about weekly vlogs anymore, but I feel like that would be the easiest content for me to produce to you guys, be able to incorporate the readathon directly into my channel, be able to show you guys what the books I'm reading, my thoughts on my reading, you guys know how vlogs work, while still being pretty low maintenance for me right now, which is definitely what I need because I do have a full-time job now and I just don't have the time or energy to be doing really time-consuming videos at this point. So even if weekly vlogs aren't all that popular right now, I believe it's better than nothing and I believe you guys would agree with me on that. So we'll see. We'll see if that works out. I hope it does. I think it would be good for me and you to go on that journey together during this readathon. So let me know any and all thoughts. Don't forget to leave me any recommendations for the disability rep and the horrors with fantasy magical creatures in it, please. I really, really, really want more books with that. Also, let me know down below if you guys are participating in this readathon and what you plan on reading for it, but that is going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!